Good to go, Joe. I see the attendees are filing in at this point. We're up to about 22 attendees and, and uh, panelists in addition. So we're gonna get started. Welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to this meeting of the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority. This meeting is about Codman Yard and uh, the improvements and expansion thereof. This is because of the COVID-19 protocols, a virtual public meeting. The improvements on Codman Yard and are being done under the Red Line Orange Line Transformation Project. And we'll tell you a little about that tonight as well. Next slide, please. First, I'll go through the agenda for this evening's meeting. Uh, we're gonna begin with a safety moment. And then we will have, go through the public meeting process and how we handle it under the COVID-19 regulations. We will have uh, a little discussion on the red line, orange line transformation project overall, and then a more detailed discussion of the Codman Yard project and an overview of that. We'll also uh, let you know a little bit more about how you can be engaged in this process. We're very early in this uh, design phase and that's why we wanted to get the public engaged early. And you'll have ample opportunity throughout the design and into construction to uh, weigh in on, on any concerns or interests you have. And then we'll close out with a, a public dialogue of questions and answers. I should note now, we'll go through that, the details of that in, in later slides on how you can participate by raising your hand or writing a question or if you're on the phone, calling in. Next slide, please. So our safety moment. Here we have one of our uh, excellent Redline MBTA employees wearing a, looks like an N95 safety mask and just a reminder to everyone uh, that rides the system that the MBTA is requiring that you wear face coverings when riding on public transit uh, in order to protect uh, yourselves and others. So thank, we thank you for taking that precaution. Next slide, please. Public uh, meeting COVID-19 circumstances. Most of everyone is aware that on March 12, 2020, uh, because of the, the, the COVID-19 pandemic, the uh, Governor Baker's administration issued certain restrictions that have uh, gone through various phases. Uh, we're, I think, in phase three right now, but generally they, they change the laws to allow public entities like the MBTA or your city hall or town hall to have remote participation procedures for public meetings. And that's what we're doing this under. Um, participation is very encouraged and there's multiple ways to engage. And we appreciate your patience while we go through this and we'd all love to be down at, I think the last meetings I had on this were down at the Masons Hall a couple blocks away. Hopefully before this project goes too far, we'll be back there having meetings uh, with you directly. Next slide, please. Okay, um, in having this meeting, uh, we will be recording it and it's a virtual public meeting. The, the team may ch will choose to ret retain or distribute this view video, still images, audio and or chat transcript. By continuing to attend this virtual public meeting, you're consenting to participate in a recording event recorded event. All recordings and chat transcripts will be considered a public record and may be posted on the T's website for your future and, and others future uh, viewing. If you're not comfortable being recorded, please turn off your camera. Well, I should say your cameras and microphones are muted now anyway, but when uh, given an opportunity, don't turn on your camera and refrain from chatting in the transcript box. Otherwise, you may choose to excuse yourself from the meeting to avoid being recorded. Next slide, please. Okay, and a couple more. We'll go over a little bit more of this when we go in the Q&A, but the best practices, uh, please keep your microphone muted. The mic as I said, the microphones and cameras are muted and you'll be open for questions and they'll be opened as you raise your hand to ask a question. Uh, please state your name and perhaps address if you'd like prior to asking a question or commenting so we can know, know, you know say if you live on Hillsdale Street or Hutchinson Street. Uh, virtual meeting notes, um, you can, Ask a question at any time during the meeting by clicking on the Zoom Q&A box, which you see at the center below on your screen. And you would you can type, you hit that Q&A box and type in your question and they'll be answered. We'll probably answer the written questions first when we get to the Q&A period. You can also uh, submit questions um, by going to the MBTA website for this project, which is www.mbta.com forward slash Codman Yard. And you can go to the um, vpioutreach.com Codman Yard. That is a tool that allows you to drop a pin saying I'm concerned about this location here, X, Y, and Z, and make some comments and answer some standard 
um, uh, questions if you'd like to. If you have any problems with technology during, as we all are doing Zoom calls for church and work and everything else, if someone's microphone isn't working or you, you have a problem, please call or text Martin Nee, who's our technology uh, advisor on this, and his number is 617-548-4373. And with that, I think the next slide is going to be presented by, let me see, so next slide, please. That's it, Joe. Right, okay, so now I'm gonna turn it over to Ellen DeNoyer. Ellen is the Senior Director for the Red Line Orange Line Transformation Program, and she's gonna introduce the project team. Ellen? Thanks so much, Joe. Really appreciate it. I'm very happy to um, be here virtually. Uh, I wish, uh, like everyone, I wish we could be here in person. Um, as uh, Joe said, I'm the Senior Director for the Red Line Orange Line Program and specifically responsible for the Red Line portion of the program. Um, our team includes our Chief, Maysoon Taufik, our Deputy Chief, Steve Moore, and our Project Manager, Adam Booth. And Adam is going to be uh, leading the substantive part of the presentation this evening. Um, we also have, as part of our presentation, our uh, design consultant engineers, Doug Woodbury from HNTB and Erica Blonde as well from HNTB, and Joe Nolan, who you've already met from City Point Partners uh, for community outreach. Next slide, please. So the, I'm um, going to give an overview of the Red Line Orange Line Transformation Program. And overall, our goals are primarily to provide customer benefit. And I should say, I'm also a red line rider. Um, and so I appreciate the challenges that we've had on uh, the red line in the past. And we are really dedicated to making improvements that I think everyone will really appreciate as customers and riders. So those goals include uh, improving the frequency of our service and performance times improving reliability and capacity, which has certainly been a concern on the red line, and in general to uh, bring the red line and others to a state of good repair. And as part of that, uh, the major portion of the project uh, initially, of course, is new vehicles, which I think many people have probably read about in the paper, which is very exciting. And again, that's something that our customers, I think, are really going to appreciate and enjoy. But a lot of things behind the scenes uh, that will support those new vehicles include uh, infrastructure improvements, including signal upgrades and test tracks to test the new vehicles. Um, and in particular, yard and maintenance facility upgrades to support the new vehicles. And that's what we're here to talk about this evening, specifically Cotton and Yard. So I'd like to go to the next slide and turn it over to Adam Booth, who's our project manager, to talk about the specifics of the Cotton and Yard project. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, good evening, everyone uh, that's attended uh, the meeting. As Ellen noted, uh, my name is Adam Booth, and I'm the MBTA project manager for the Codman Yard Expansion and Improvements Project. I'm just going to go over a quick overview of the project, um, which will cover some of the added benefits, location and the project limits, and the state of the yard as it is today. Um, a lot of you on the in the meeting uh, may, or not be, may or may not be aware that the MBTA is getting a new and expanded fleet of red line vehicles. Um, in, in order to support this increased fleet, uh, the yard is going to be expanded by six additional tracks, um, which is going to provide storage for these new vehicles. In addition to expanding the yard, um, the existing yard components and the infrastructure are going to be upgraded in order to bring the yard to a state of good repair. Um, some of the benefits that will come with this um, are improvement of service reliability, addressing overall reliability and modernization needs, and reduction of yard maintenance um, as much as the components are going to be new at the end of the project. It's going to be a few additional benefits to the project as well, uh, which we brought up as we move through the presentation. You can see on the screen to the right, um, this is an aerial, aerial view of Cardman Yard uh, looking north towards Ashmont Station. Go to the next slide, please. So moving on to the location of the project, uh, which I'm sure a lot of you in attendance are familiar with. Uh, Codman Yard is located in Dorchester, Massachusetts. Uh, it's a terminal location on the Ashmont branch of the Red Line, uh, located just south of Ashmont Station. And the yard is also adjacent to the Mattapan High Speed Line, um, being between Ashmont Station and Cedar Grove. The limits of the project and expansion of the yard will remain within the existing limits of the yard, 
um, in the existing fence line. Um, there will also be some work on the Mattapan high speed line connection track um, that's in the yard and the Ashmont crossover as well, um, all of which you can find labeled on the picture to the right of your screen. Next slide, please. Um, so, Carbon Yard today um, is utilized by, utilized by the MBTA in red line operations for a few different uh, things um, vehicle storage, inspection, and light maintenance. The, large, the, the yard was last rebuilt in the 1980s, which highlights the need for work and upgrades. This has been a little while. Uh, there are currently 16 storage tracks in the yard, um, one loop track a car wash and a vehicle inspection pit. You can see some of the yard features uh, labeled on the photo to the right. With that being said, I'm going to pass the presentation on to uh, Doug Woodbury, who is the design project manager from HNTB, um, to kind of go through the design plans um, that we're planning to improve and upgrade the yard. Thank you, Adam. So you, you can see penciled in red these six new storage tracks that are being planned that are within the footprint of the yard itself and inside of the loop track. So the yard itself is not actually expanding its footprint. We're just going to be utilizing some of the space that was um, undeveloped within the yard proper itself. So this will support the, the goal of storing more trains as the new trains come into service. You can also see called out the, what we're calling the bypass track. This is an important benefit because it goes by a lot of the switches that lead into the current yard itself, gives a more efficient path in there. But it also is going to reduce the noise because each time that the train goes over one of the switches, you, you hear an impact noise on that. So it will be a, a simpler way to get into the yard and, and generating less, less noise. Overall, as the yard tracks are um, improved, there would be less uh, noise and vibration from the track structure, replacing the tracks, the ballast, and the sub ballast, um, providing uh, you know, more, more geometry in, within the yard so that you will hear less of that uh, wheel squeal noise that emanates from the yard at times as trains go around some of the uh, some of the tight turns. In addition, we're going to be replacing the crossover at the end of the red line service by the Ashmont substation. The reason this is important is that it will let us actually go faster through the crossover so the trains can turn back more quickly and more efficiently supporting a faster service as well as a more reliable service for that. In addition, the, uh, the yard will support overall reliable operations for the red line, trains coming in and out much more efficiently to uh, start the revenue service days. Next slide, please. Some of the other improvements. One of the biggest things that uh, we want to look at early on is to move the Hillsdale Street entrance gate further into the yard away from the adjacent residences. We've heard um, from people that uh, you know, trucks idle in front of that gate waiting to gain access and uh, that can be a, a noise issue for some of the adjacent uh, residences. So by moving the gate further into the yard, the trucks will be further away. Mm. The new gate is also going to be automatic so that MBTA personnel just have to swipe their badges mm. in order to gain access rather than wait for someone to open the gate or get out of the vehicle to open the gate. There will also be an automated protocol for third party deliveries into the system so that you won't be having for any material deliveries into the yard, there won't be a significant delay for trucks being able to access mm. the gate move in. This uh, supports the uh, goal of security of the yard, but also provides an improvement in noise reduction. The picture on the, uh, the lower right that you see is some of the existing conditions within the yard, the walkways and the roadways within the yard. So you can see are some of the crumbling that represents a safety hazard uh, potential to the people that are working within the yard. So we're going to be repairing all of those features so that the MBTA personnel that work there have a much safer work environment and overall achieve a state of good repair project. Next slide, please. One of the other things that we've learned already on this project is that the lighting system within the yard um, trespasses out beyond the fence line into adjacent properties. So we're going to be completely replacing it with a neighborhood friendly LED based lighting system. It will be more electrically efficient, but also it's going to be redesigned using a computer simulation tool, such as the example you see in the top right of this slide so that lighting levels are more uniform throughout the yard, lower lighting levels overall while still maintaining safety and security. But most importantly, lighting will be angled away from the adjacent properties so that there will be very limited light that comes out over the fence line of the yard proper, um, thereby re reducing the visual effects to the, to the adjacent neighborhoods. 
we'll be replacing all of the third rail systems in the yard and the power system overall, as well as the train control components in the yard and at the adjacent crossovers, supporting much more efficient operations and reduced maintenance for the red line. Next slide, please. So in terms of environmental improvements, we're going to start out by doing a noise baseline survey. We're going to determine what is the noise level generated by activities in the yard with trains moving in and out and normal activities so that we have a basis of comparison. As I've said, with the track and the upgrades that are underway, it's likely to be a, a significant noise reduction. But this lets us test that theory uh, by establishing a baseline of what it is today and then in the future and look at what the noise levels are and show a noticeable improvements. We're also going to be removing the pile of soil and debris that you see circled in right on the uh, upper right hand picture circled in red as well as a, a ground view picture of it there. So we'll be uh, you know, improving the site overall. The project will not impact any wetlands or waterways because it's contained within the existing site so that the Massachusetts Environmental Policy Act um, really doesn't even apply to this project, so there's no concerns there with the uh, project getting dragged out in time with, with permitting issues. Next slide. Now, while this work is going on, there will be some uh, construction impacts. There will be some increase in traffic, um, materials delivered to the yard and workers coming into the yard. We are going to be controlling that within the contract um, the hours that they can um, access the yard from either gate. Um, there will also be some construction noise. Again, the, most of the construction is going to be done during daytime hours within the yard proper itself, so that this will be limited by the contract, the work that can be done outside of normal, uh, normal daytime work hours. There may be some work that has to be done, such as the connections to the existing red line crossover adjacent to Mattapan, as well as the connection over to the Mattapan high speed line um, that will need to be done on a weekend diversion. So there will be probably two weekend bus diversions um, on the red line itself and most likely one on the Mattapan high speed line in order to accomplish the work necessary. So that work may include some after hours work and will be publicly noticed when those, when those events are going to occur. But the majority of the work can be done within the yard itself by taking out pieces of the yard one at a time and progressing them during daytime hours. Next slide, please. So we started our design in May of this year. Um, our final design is going to be completed in March of 2021 with the contract bid out in April of 2021. The contract will then be awarded and a notice to proceed given to the contractor in the fall of 2021. Um, given a limited time before the winter months start, there won't be a whole lot of construction activity expected in the fall of 2021. Um, the real construction is going to start in spring of 2022, and we expect that it will be completed in the fall of 2024. These are preliminary dates and the funding considerations and things that of them may move. But this is our, our best estimate at this point in time what the project timeline is going to look like. Next slide, please. Now I'd like to ask Erica to talk about how the public can, uh, can comment on the process that they've heard about and help us make the project better for everyone. Thanks, Doug. And thanks everyone for joining us this evening for our first stakeholder event of the project. Um, as Joe mentioned at the beginning, we of course wish that we could be uh, in person with you guys, but uh, we're very committed to having an inclusive um, and comprehensive stakeholder engagement process throughout the life of the project. And so to that end, we will be scheduling additional public meetings that will be held at key project milestones. Um, in order to notice for those meetings, uh, we will be sending emails, uh, flyers and mailings, and also advertising in newspapers uh, so that you can be aware of not only key project milestones, but of the meetings that we will be holding. We will also be posting on the project website uh, future uh, about future meetings and again, any um, important milestones. So we have several online resources uh, that you can access 24 seven. So the first is the MBTA project website, which is linked below. And the second is an online comment form uh, where you can enter any questions or comments that you have for the project team and we will get back to you um, via email. Um, we also have the social media, so we'll be using Twitter and Facebook, the MBTA's Twitter and Facebook to um, make you aware of any future opportunities for engagement 
we really look forward to hearing from you guys about um, how the project, how you see the project, and also any comments that you might have on the engagement tools themselves that we're using to keep you involved. And I'll now pass it over to my colleague Joe to close out and get us started with Q and A. Well, thank you, Erica. I appreciate that. Um, thank you, everybody, for a very informative and and uh, interesting uh, proposal um, presentation here tonight. I note that we have as many as 47 participants, three by phone and 44 uh, on the Zoom call. So I know some of you probably clicked in a little bit late. So if you're concerned, if you missed any part of the PowerPoint, this will be posted on the MBTA's Codman Yard website after so you'll be able to catch up on any slides or parts of the meeting you may have missed. We appreciate everybody joining in this, in this manner. With regard to the instructions for the, if we're gonna do the question and answer period now, and we'll take a little bit of time as we bring each person on because sometimes technically it just takes a, little, a moment to get people's microphones open and such. So please share only one question or comment at a time. Limit your, your speaking to a couple minutes if you can to allow everybody a chance to participate. With so many members would like to give everybody a chance to participate if they'd like. If you are one of the three members that called in on the telephone, you have to dial star nine and the moderator will turn on your call and, and call out the last four digits of your number. So if somebody at uh, 8408 had a question, you'll have pressed star nine, we'll see a hand raised next to your name and we'll, we'll click on you and give you an opportunity to speak. Um, in addition, if you look at the bottom of your screen, if you're on the Zoom call, you should see a raise hand button where you can click on that and raise your hand. And questions will be taken pretty much in the order that they're received. Um, and everybody will try and get through everybody's questions. We'll see how many we get and how, how we can handle it. If not, there are, we'll cover at the end a lot of opportunity for you to um, participate beyond this meeting by making comments, doing surveys, and, and sending us emails, et cetera. Um, so, Joe, we, yeah. Joe, it's Marty. We have a couple of ex, uh, excellent questions in the uh, answered file. If you'd like, I could read those. And then we could get into answering questions live. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Um, will they re will they be replacing the tracks by Huron Circle to reduce vibrations in our homes and squealing noises that we hear? Hi, this is uh, Adam Booth, the project manager with MBTA. Um, so right now the limits of the work are um, combined to the yard itself, um, again with the Mattapan um, high speed line connection track right there and the Ashmont crossover. Um, but overall, um, as Doug said, with the new components within the yard, that should uh, reduce the noise that you hear and the squealing that you get. Thank you. Thank you Is Ron. any work needed or planned for the bridge over Gallivan Boulevard and or any retaining walls around the property? Um, right now, there's no plans for any retaining walls. Um, the bridge is uh, kind of managed by another, uh, another group with the MBTA, but there's no known plans uh, within this project uh, to do any bridge work um, at this time or any need for it at this time. Right. The T owns uh, or controls, uh, manages some 600 plus bridges over the line. They've done a good job of trying to bring those up to snuff. And so it's just a, a priority thing. That bridge, I think, is still in decent shape. Per the recent inspections. Marty, Next question. question. I live at Brookvale and Hutchinson. Are there improvements planned for the fence and grounds that face Hutchinson Street? This is currently in disrepair and is an eyesore at the end of our street. Trash collects behind the fence and the fence itself is in disrepair. Hi. So, um, yes, right now there's plans to uh, repair the fence and uh, replace the fence with a, or an MBTA um, standard fencing. So um, the, if, as long as the, it's uh, within the current project uh, limits, then that fence will be repaired or replaced. Great. I, I see that a lot of people are typing their questions in. I can continue to read them, but would it be best to go to a, a live Q and A. Why don't we go through some more of the typed questions while we have sure. them, and then we'll go live afterwards. And I do see we All have right. people with their hands raised, and we'll go to those after. 
So why don't you go to the open questions, Marty, and go through those if you could? Sure. Um, we have six questions in queue. And, and Has Marty, an alternative you, can, you can write the name. I see the, the like, so one is from Jesse Correa. And yeah. so state the person's name when it's typed. Sure. Uh, Jesse Correa. Has an alternative route been considered mm -hmm. off of Galvin? For example, to be used to limit disruption, noise, dust, et cetera, for Hillsdale residents. So an alternative entrance, I believe, is what you're referring to. Jesse, so um, right now, uh, an alternative is being looked into. But, um, there's no definite plans uh, to do that. But um, there are some issues that come into that, such as getting the equipment across the tracks um, Right now, but that's something that we are exploring, um, so that not all traffic is coming through Hillsdale. And historically, we have, you know, as as the neighbors of Hillsdale Street recall, um, I worked at the T when we we did this. We we used the that yard as a construction phasing yard uh, for the improvements at Ashmont and up on the Red Line. Uh, we've learned a lot in that process, and and uh, worked very closely with the neighbors to try and make sure so we will be definitely working closely with the neighbors if there's deliveries and truck uh, or employees going in and out of there. And that's another reason the new gate would be uh, helpful and installed early in the process. Next question from Stefan Wunsch. Since the Mattapan line connection to the yard is on a portion of the line where I believe maximum track speed is usually allowed, after the work is complete, will there be a speed restriction for the Mattapan line in the area of the yard track? If so, is that speed restriction expected to significantly impact the Mattapan trip line times? Hi, so our work um, in the, the scope of this project should not impact the Mattapan line um, other than the time where we're replacing that connection track that the BTA uses. Um, so right now, um, there's no known restrictions that will um, impact uh, the Mattapan line at this time. I this can, question is from Len. I was just going to add, there, there actually is a connection already there. It's seldom used, generally only by maintenance vehicles. So Adam's answer um, correctly that, uh, yes, there won't be any new speed restrictions. It's really replacement in kind of something that's already there. Um. Marty, do you mind if I jump in for a minute? I just wanted to, Joe, do, see if we wanted to prompt if there were any elected officials that had been able to call in. Sure. Absolutely. So we did have uh, an RSVP from uh, City Councilor Baker, but I didn't, I'm not sure I saw him on the list unless he called in. So City Councilor Baker, are you there? And if you want to raise your hand by pressing star nine, if you're on the phone. And we also had um, from Dustin Gardner from uh, um, Andrea Campbell's office, Councilman Andrew Campbell's, Campbell's office. Dustin, do you want to uh, make any comment? Uh, Dustin was on, but appears um, he may have dropped off. Not, he dropped off. Okay, he may have dropped off. Okay. Well, if there are any elected officials, just raise your hand, and when we get to the raised hands portion, you will uh, just identify yourselves as such. Because I know that the counselors and the reps and, and all the uh, elected officials in this area are very interested in this project. So did you, uh, Marty, do you want to go back to Len's question? Sure. Um, will, the, will the civil improvement remediation studies incorporate the runout area south of the station? Will there no longer be trains parked there running and making noise, as well as trains running their announcements? So I can't comment uh, on how the operations are going to run all the time. I can't promise that there's never going to be a train there parked running. Um, as far as the civil improvement uh, studies, uh, perhaps I can pass that on to the designer. Um, Doug, do you have any insights to that? Okay. So, well, we are going to be rehabilitating the track through there. Primarily, that area is used for changing crews um, and it's likely to remain. There are some uh, operator platforms there. 
So whether it's a change of crew to go back into service or changing the crew to bring the train into the yard, it's likely that trains will still be there at times in order to, to make those crew change functions in that particular area. Thank you, Doug. Next question from Virginia Ward. Thank you for sharing this information. Looks like a great project. Is there a plan for rodent control once digging starts? Yes, so the MVTA typically includes language in the specification to, for rodent control. Um, perhaps, Doug, again, if you want to elaborate on um, how we plan to do that. Yeah, in every project that's been a noted concern for the MVTA. So there, you know, it starts out with an observation of existing conditions and then they will um, you know, pre-treat certain areas and there are bait uh, boxes put out if necessary. Um, it requires regular removal of that and reporting um, on a bi-weekly basis so that uh, making sure both that the, the work is being accomplished in terms of proper baiting and removal of any rodents as well as reporting out so that making sure that there, there are no um, occurrences of large populations occurring and certainly we encourage public outreach if they do see something during the process that will become immediate attention. It's a, it's a standing agenda item on every construction project at the weekly or bi-weekly meetings to make sure that it's being adequately addressed. Well, thank you, Doug. And I, I do know that, you know, having worked on this area before, that has been an issue, especially we're going to be removing that large pile of soils that's been there for a long time. So Bill will be very diligent with the contractor to make sure they're attentive to uh, that and working closely with Boston City Services to make sure that we are on top of that issue. Next question is from a Colleen Moore. I know this line ties into the Manhattan trolley line. Will this work have any impact on my trolley service? I think it's the Mattapan line, Marty, but uh, we, we could have a Manhattan connection in the future, but that's, uh, are we going to impact uh, the, the trolley services at all, Doug? I think so. Likely to be just that one weekend where we reestablish the connection into the Mattapan line where we would have to, um, you know, do bus diversion for that one weekend in order to complete the work and that connection there. Other than that, there should be no other other changes to the Mattapan trolley line. Great. Okay, Carolyn Villers asks, I live at the end of Hillsdale adjacent to the gate. I'm relatively new to the neighborhood, but other neighborhoods have said previous work was very disruptive with large trucks coming in and out at all times and work during all hours. Can you again review how you will approach your work plan to minimize disruption to the neighborhood? Yeah, so the majority of the work uh, for this project um, is going to be done during the daytime. And as far as traffic in and out of the yard, um, we plan on writing it to the contract, uh, you know, limited hours that they can work and come in and out, um, and kind of work with the, the residents on Hillsdale and, you know, the adjacent area, um, you know, in order to, you know, have the least impact uh, and the least disruption to uh, the surrounding community. Next question from MWB. Is there any plan for yard access from Hutchinson Street? Um, right now, we don't have any plans to add any additional access. So right now, just the access from Gallivan Boulevard um, and Hillsdale Street will remain the, the access points. Thank you, Adam. And next question from Yvette. When, will, when the work was done last time, sound buffering was installed on the Wessex line. Will they be doing something to maintain the walkways along the Van Winkle Huron side, as well as do something to buffer the sound disturbance both during construction, as well as due to the increase that came with the last changeover of tracks, and now with increased, with an increase in service planning. Okay, so uh, as far as noise goes, but um, it's been mentioned a couple of times with the new components uh, in the yard, uh, noise should be reduced. Um, however, we are doing a noise baseline survey, but, um, which will analyze the sound uh, due to the new tracks and things like that. Um, and based on the outcome of this survey, um, if 
it's uh, determined that some uh, additional measures need to be taken. Um, we'll kind of address those as we you know, kind of complete the survey and we move forward into, uh, you know, with the design and uh, progress uh, a little bit further with the design. But uh, as of right now, there's no uh, definite plan um, to address um, the sidewalks or uh, anything like that. But. Okay. With, with no open questions, I'll turn it back over to Joe. All right. Thank you, Marty. And I will go. I see we have at least three hands raised. Now, this is the point in the Q&A period where you'll have an opportunity to speak directly and ask your questions of the panel. Uh, looking uh, well, here, we have um, Marianne Shea has her hand raised. And could uh, you un open her mic? Mm, there seems to be an, an issue with her version of uh, Zoom that doesn't allow talk. Um, oh, there we go. Go. Can you hear us now? You might need to. Oh, let me see if I can unmute. Oh, here we go. Do we have multiple people? So Marianne, can you hear us? Can you can we hear you? Okay, let's try Nancy Cat again. And we'll come back to Marianne. Hi, Joe. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Is this Janet? Yes, this is Janet Clancy Cadigan. Thank you for your time this evening. I appreciate it. Um, I have been a lifelong resident of Hillsdale Street for over 40 years. And I know you've mentioned a couple of times you were, um, you were part of the previous projects going on in this yard. So you're aware of what Hillsdale Street has been through for the past couple of decades. I am. So you might understand why I'm not looking forward to this project coming up. Um, I sent a very lengthy email to your red orange line email address last night. You did answer most of those questions in this call today. Um, one of the questions you did not answer, or you did partly, but the air quality in the dust and dirt that these types of projects drive up onto Hillsdale Street in particular, with those trucks idling at that gate, and I know the gate is going to be moved in, I would like to know how far that gate is going to be moved in, but the dust and dirt and air quality for the next three years on that street is going to be horrendous. What are your plans about, what are you going to do about that? Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, we will turn that over to Adam to talk a little bit about, and I'm sure Doug can elaborate. We, uh, first of all, I, I do recall we've, we've met before. We've worked before last time. We did improve things over time, but it's, it's difficult to go through construction. Um, we're going to be very attentive. We're coming into this project knowing the concerns on Hillsdale Street, uh, both with traffic and dust you know, mitigation. So we've, we've, we're going to have very strict stuff written into the contract. Now this is very early in the design process. So the, those plans will evolve, but um, Adam, if you want to talk about or Doug about the, our process for mitigation and uh, dust control. Yeah, sure. Uh, hi Janet. So uh, I know you mentioned you want to know how far the back the fence will be moved, but um, as it was noted, we're still kind of early on. I don't believe we have a definite, um, location for it. But, uh, perhaps Doug can uh, expand on that. But um, we will have uh, dust control measures um, written into the specifications in the contract that the contractors will have to follow, um, whether that be uh, like wheel washes, uh, you know, watering down the site, um, you know, as needed, um, things like that. But Doug, would you like to expand on that? Sure. I mean, as Adam said, it may still change, but we're looking at moving the gate 20 to 30 feet into the yard to get it uh, completely away from the residence. Even a, a good sized truck should be able to park in front of the gate without actually being in front of the residence. As Adam said, the uh, construction specifications that we're developing right now will require you know, wheel washing, they will require watering, and they will require um, daily reporting by the superintendent of the contractor on site on any dust conditions that that do occur and mitigation measures to be to be developed 
right then and there if something happens it's uh, unexpected thank you doug does that answer your question janet for now well i think it may be turned off so we'll come back if, if you have follow-up questions we will we'll recognize you how about we try jesse korea Hi all, uh, I live over on uh, 52 Hillsdale. Um, I've lived here for, you know, about 12 years. Um, I have significant concerns with the traffic on the street. We already deal with um, a higher number of vehicles coming in and out of the street um, for MBTA staff heading into the trail yard, um, speeding most of the time. Um, but I do have concerns with larger vehicles. So tractor trailers, other construction vehicles that are gonna be coming down the street. We are a very narrow street, um, cars parked on either side of the street. So I wanna know what safety measures are being put in place in terms of protecting vehicles and uh, property on our street. And also whether or not there has been any consideration given to adding some sort of cul-de-sac situation at the end of our yard with this expansion of the fencing um, to allow delivery vehicles that do come down our street um, you know to kind of turn so if that's been at any point in this design phase uh, thought of um, to help the neighbors on hillsdale street as we've had to suffer through construction previously having some added benefit also to our neighborhood by installing something like that so vehicles can turn around and for snow plows during the winter, which the MBTA also does not do on our street. Um, that's, yeah, so it's a couple of questions, but looking forward to your answer. Those are fair questions, Jesse. I know with regard to uh, policing, either employees or contractors uh, coming up and down Hillsdale Street, um, the, certainly major deliveries, we will contemplate having um, police details out there to make sure, and if a problem develops, we will be on it. Um, I can turn it over to Adam and Doug to talk about uh, how we configure the gate. It's, I should remind everybody that we're at the between 15 and 30%. So this is why we're having these early public meetings to get this kind of feedback to see if there are tweaks that can help. So, yeah, thank you for having your question. Uh, so we will follow, you know, standard safety uh, specifications and things like that that you would have in a project. Um, obviously, if you, if you have additional concerns, um, we will work with the residents on Hillsdale Street. Um, if maybe you guys find things that aren't really working out, um, we can try to see how we can address those issues um, if they come up. Um, as far as a cul-de-sac at the end of the street, there is not a current plan to do so. Um, Right now, our plan is just to, to move the fence back in the yard. Um, again, we're fairly early on in design, so um, you know something that we can definitely look into um, as we progress. But uh, right now, there's no plan to do so. Has there been a reporting feature, or will there be, I should ask, excuse me, a reporting feature for which neighbors on this street in this neighborhood uh, and surrounding neighborhoods affected by this project can report, you know, any noise complaints, dust complaints, traffic complaints, um, you know, emails are great, but knowing that there will be a reporting feature that will be uh, available to us, you know, is, is valuable to me. Yeah, so right now we have, uh, we've already set up a project specific uh, kind of comment kind of forum for that. Um, which we can look to utilize during construction as well. Um, but but um, as always, you can still call uh, the MBTA a customer support uh, phone number and, and contacts, but um, you know, we'll try to make it as easy as possible for you to uh, address your, convey your concerns. Erica, if you want to talk just briefly about Pima and how that collects data, it's a spatial mapping tool where you can kind of drop a pin and uh, We'll be checking that daily, and if we see a bunch of pins uh, on Hillsdale Street with regard to traffic or speeding, or uh, Erica, you can you know it better than I. Why don't you tell us about it? 
Sure. Yeah. It's, um, thank you, Joe. I'm actually glad you brought that up because Yvette had asked a great question about um, the page for where you can voice your questions and concerns. Um, and so it is, I think, on the last slide of this PowerPoint, it's uh, vpioutreach.com forward slash Codman Yard. We will be posting it on the MBTA project site, so it's easy to find. But as my colleague Joe mentioned, um, it is a tool that allows you to enter your comment, um, categorize it by topic, so we can start to see if there's trends um, related to safety or environmental quality. Um, and then there's a spatial component. And so, as Joe mentioned, you can drop a pin um, in areas near your home or workplace. Um, to let us know if there's specific intersections or spots of concern, that way we can make sure to address it. Um, we get notifications the minute a comment is entered, and so um, you can expect a really quick turnaround time from us, um, and you can continue the conversation with us uh, via email. Probably the quickest way to get a hold of us is, is through that comment form, so certainly encourage you uh, all to utilize it. Very good. Thank you, Erica. Um, why don't we try, I, Marianne, you worked with our technical guy, um, Marty, to see if we can get you through. I don't know if you're still there. Did we lose Marianne? Marianne, if uh, you can hear us, just unmute yourself and you should be able to speak. It looks like she may have dropped off. I see some things kind of going back and forth. Why don't we try our Charles Bankowski? Charles, Charles can you hear us? I see that Charles also posted some question in the Q&A box as well. Okay, so why don't we take it over there. So Charles asked, um, he lives at 42, Hill, 42 Hillsdale Street. They'd like to meet with uh, us in person and project myself and project staff in person with any of the neighbors who would like to attend. Is there an opportunity to set up a, a meeting with the neighbors of Hillsdale Street at some time in the near term? So right now, I uh, believe due to the Massachusetts restrictions and things like that, um, that all meetings are um, virtual uh, for the time being. I can't say how long that will last, but um, we can definitely take this uh, question and, and look into something. But yeah I, I certainly if you were to meet with a couple neighbors spread out i don't know if that's a if, if that's that's system-wide at the t i know it at some other projects mm -hmm. like a, a smaller a butter beating where everybody wears masks and is spread out is uh, maybe possible at some point in the future um certainly yeah. before the design evolves I think we can also consider doing something uh, like uh, like what we're doing now in Zoom as well um, with with any interested abutters or community members. Although it does seem like um, Janet Clancy said that a face to face meeting would be nice in the outdoors, and I agree. I think that would be nice. <laughs> so the the short answer is we have to check the rules for for COVID and as, as they apply to the MBTA, and we'll get back to you. And certainly, at the very least, we can set up a separate smaller working group stakeholder meeting with a butters of Hillsdale Street to really drill into those issues. I think we've gotten through all of our questions. Am I missing any, uh, anybody else on the panel? Just got another in. Um, Carolyn Villers. Um, <clears throat> there was very limited outreach for this meeting. Only a few houses got notice. It was one of the neighbors that gave notice to most of the neighborhood. It is difficult to trust that the project will be responsive to neighborhood challenges. Well, I will answer that. We did uh, hundreds of flyers around the neighborhood on every side. There were flyers dropped off specifically at houses. As you attend meetings like this and you sign in, if you go onto the FEMA website and sign in, we will have your email and you'll also, not only will we flyer the neighbors, but we will also uh, send direct emails to you and you'll get that's where you can get project updates if there's going to be some work and such so we're building that database as it's been stated, stated a few times this is very early in the process we will be very very attuned to outreach communication and uh, we'll make sure Carolyn that every time there's any meeting or update you will get it directly and your neighbors and we do apologize if, uh, if you were missed from those notifications 
Yeah, the, you know, every, we, tr we, we can't, we try not to put them in mailboxes. Um, but anyway, as we build the database, it becomes a lot easier and we can just send emails out to everyone. But we, we did try to work through Boston Neighborhood Services, local community groups, we flyered the neighborhood. And uh, again, we apologize if we missed you first time. Uh, Carolyn has her, um, her hand raised as well. If we want to, she might have a follow up. Oh, sure. I wanted to clarify, I, I did receive a flyer um, in my fence, uh, which I appreciated, but um, most of neighbors I spoke to and then other adjacent streets, I'm right adjacent to the fence on Hillsdale. So, um, but most people got informed by neighbors um, or on dog walks. So I don't know what the process was. Again, I, I did receive it, but um, I know that that was a concern raised by several um, in the neighborhoods that will be affected. So generally what we try to do is it, it, um, up and down Hillsdale Street, um, uh, over on Hutchinson Street, uh, the neighborhood across from Galvin Boulevard, and then the neighborhood that runs parallel on the other side of uh, the um, uh, Mattapan tracks. So I think that was where we did the couple hundred of flyers. But if we missed you, we apologize. But we certainly won't miss you, you or anybody now. As we yeah, can. as I said, I, I did receive it, but um, there's a lot of dog walkers in the neighborhood and that's how most people found out and they had not received the flyers. And um, so again, I, I did receive it, but it was a big concern raised by neighbors. Okay, well, thank you for bringing that to our attention, Carolyn, and we'll, we'll do better. I mean, we had, I think, 45 attendees, uh, which is pretty good for a Zoom meeting in the beginning, but if we miss, we don't want to miss anybody. So any help you can give us in that regard, we appreciate it. We have a lot more hands raised, so we're going to go back to, why don't we try this one on the telephone? We actually have Charles um, open right now. Charles, did you have a question, uh, a follow-up, Bankowski? I just spoke to Charles on the phone and he's shown as being unmuted, but unfortunately uh, there are older versions of Zoom that may or may not be uh, working with this format. Yeah, Zoom changed their protocol fairly recently and that, that can cause a problem. Why don't yeah. we go back and Charles, if you're there and if you have another question, certainly put it in the Q&A, type it in. Um, why don't we try this, uh, Kim, with the uh, telephone at 3759. So can you hear me at 3759? Oh, one minute. Cool. It is unmuted, I don't know if they're Unless it's muted on their end, um, we are showing it as an unmuted line. Okay. So let's go to, can we try now Android? Hello. Hello, Android, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead, please. Okay. I, uh, my name is Joanna Andre, and I live at 10 Hutchinson Street, and my um, property abuts the yard. Um, and I have um, some concerns um, in like four, four different categories, a couple of categories I think you've already addressed. The major one that I have is that my property um, the, the train yard sits up higher uh, than my property, and I'm concerned about um, runoff, water runoff um, from the yard when there's a, a heavy rainfall. Um, my next concern is uh, noise mitigation. You already talked about um, uh, rodents, because that was my other concern. When you start excavating, um, there's a usually that disturbs um, nests and everything like that, but you already addressed what you plan to do with that. My other concern is, um, are there any, um, in terms of power outages, you said you're gonna start working on the third rails. Um, 
Are we going to, um, are the neighborhoods going to be subject to long-term power outages? So Adam, if you want to talk uh, about what we're doing with regard to drainage and, and flood capacity <laughs> in the yard and maybe address how it will impact power. Yeah, sure. So we are uh, addressing the, uh, redoing the drainage within the yard, which would hopefully um, address any concerns that you have with water runoff. Um, and the power, um, you should not expect any power outages from our project. Uh, all power in the yard is uh, powered from MBTA substation, uh, which is the Ashmont substation. So I wouldn't anticipate that you would receive, you would see any uh, effects of that from our project. Um, I don't know, Doug, if you want to provide any more insight on the water runoff or, or the power. Sure. Um, yeah, in terms of the water runoff, so the yard that's out there now has very limited drainage features. Um, we are going to be installing, and it's basically due to the age uh, at which it was built. Um, we are going to be installing drains under the track itself, which should help collect the water. There's actually a large Boston, Boston Water Sewer Company main that comes through there, where we will be able to connect to that in order to remove water from the site. So overall, the yard site should drain much better in the future than it does today. Um, so in terms of the um, the power outage, you know, yes, all of the all the all of the third rail power is fed from that substation. So the only people that will be experiencing power outages would be the MBTA trains as we as we need to work there. So that will be work that will be done when trains are out of the yard running in service um, during the day. Um, so there's really limited train movements in the yard during the daytime hours. So be able to conveniently shut down the power in, in order to accomplish the third rail work when the trains are off uh, running around the system. Very good. Thank you, Doug. Um, why don't we try Mary Ann Shea? I think she had one of the older versions and Marty, you may have made her, uh, given her the opportunity to talk. Can we try that now? Mary Ann. Okay. I have promoted Marianne to be a panelist, which should give her the opportunity to speak. However, as was the case with a few others, I don't believe the technology is allowing that to happen. And I, I believe it's a Zoom, it's a, what version of Zoom okay. you have. All right, Jesse has a follow, well actually we haven't heard yet from Daniel Magoon. So can we try to open Daniel's mic? Yep, uh, here we go. Good evening. Hi, Daniel, how are you? I'm, I'm well, thank you. Thank you, for the, uh, thank you for the presentation. And I just wanted to mention, I want to thank my neighbors too, because uh, we didn't get, uh, Rangeley Street was, was not made aware of the meeting and thank God for our dog walkers and our great neighborhood. So uh, my question I have is really about noise and a lot of these issues that have been gone, going on for the years. I live, on the tracks, I'm going to bought her at 30 Rangeley Street. Uh, and it seems like a lot of these issues are kind of, you know, it's kind of kit the can. You know, it's great to hear that we have some mitigation for, for Hillsdale Street. But if you move the gate in from Hillsdale Street, now those trucks are on the back of Rangeley Street. Uh, has any consideration been made to put a sound barrier around the entire yard and encapsulate the yard to kill the mitigate, you know, mitigate the noise? So obviously, it's Great to hear about the lighting. Uh, I think the same approach that you took for the lighting should be taken for the noise. That includes vehicles, that includes traffic, uh, but more importantly, try to contain the noise and keep everything in the yard. Uh, a eight foot fence isn't gonna cut it. And I think this project should, you know, beautify the neighborhood and bring in some of the noise if they can. So my question is what is being done and is that being thought about? And if it isn't, what do we have to do to make it part of the project? Thank you. Adam, do you want to talk to about what's in the program now? And Doug, maybe you can explain a little bit about the criterion for that kind of mitigation, the ambient noise, current versus what's being done, et cetera. Yeah, sure. Um, so it's definitely an option that uh, has been brought uh, up to the project team and something that uh, we can look into. Um, again, there's no current plan to put up barriers um, around the whole yard. Um, 
Well, certainly there's constraints that come along with that. Um, but um, again, there's a noise baseline study that's uh, going to be done. And um, depending on the outcome of that, um, you know, if there's additional measures that we need to take or that we can take, then uh, certainly will be looked into. Um, but again, right now we don't have a plan to, to surround the yard with uh, any barriers or anything of that sort right now. Okay. So in terms of the criteria, if the project were going to be increasing noise levels or moving noise generating sources closer to residences, then it would um, almost be automatic that some sort of mitigation would be, would be triggered. Um, we actually believe, as we said, the project should be reducing noise levels um, overall. Therefore, there's nothing that's going to automatically trigger implementation of something like a, a sound wall or, or other measures. There are some intermediate measures that we can consider as well. But again, I think that's why we're, we're having this dialogue to make sure that we understand you know, all of the concerns and they can all be brought forth to the MBTA. So thank you, Daniel. I mean, short is uh, it, it's not in the current plans, but it's very early. They're doing the noise study. If they hit certain criteria, then it would be required. Um, again, you and your neighbors um, are, have made it clear that that's an interest and the project's going to look into that, but it isn't in the scope of the improvements to the yard now, which are operational. This, this next one's a phone caller. It's Pat Xavier, and I'm, I'm turning on uh, your mic now, Pat, if you can hear us. Um, yes, I can. I'm not a phone caller. I'm actually on, on Zoom, but... Um, oh, okay. Uh, and I don't know where this 3759 came from, but anyway, I want to go back to now that since you are in the early design phase, if there is any way to move a lot of this traffic off of to Gallivan Boulevard, it would solve a lot of the problems that we have on Hillsdale. I do live on Hillsdale. I was here through the Ashmont, um, you know, redo. It was hell. Um, I know you've got a lot of stuff in the contract to mitigate. You learned a lot from the last project. But, um, you know, in this length of a project, uh, the contractors do get uh, a little complacent and, and things don't always go right. So I would echo, echo what Jesse had said about having something that we can report problems immediately to someone who has the authority to correct them. Not that we have to go through, you know, our city, you know, our count, the city council or any, or, you know, did we need immediate action redress when, when there, we see problems? The dirt was horrible with windows closed. It was a constant layer of dust throughout the house um, from the beginning to the end of the project. The traffic was awful. You know, we have a lot more delivery trucks coming up and down the street now than we did uh, a couple years ago. They have enough problems as it is when you start adding the MBT trucks. Um, you're removing soil, that is a concern, if that's going to be coming up and down the street. Um, it just really was hell. And I don't know what's happening now, but just the other night, um, one of the longest tractor, tra the longest trailers I've ever seen in my life was towed down the street about 11 o'clock at night, inching down the street. We have cars on the one side that usually park up on the curb as it is and we have trouble getting up and down in parallel parking. And I, you know, I get up in the morning and my, my side mirror is turned in and I know it's because you've brought a big truck down the street and yes, they're looking out for us, but it's, it's a little disconcerting. So I, I really think if you can look at Gallivan and, and shifting as much of the traffic over to get uh, some entrance off of Gallivan, it will solve a lot of the problems here. We had retaining walls that were damaged. We did have rats, we had dirt, we had noise. We had major, major disruption for many years. And um, if we can avoid that just to a large extent, it would make all of our lives on this little street much better. And you know, we do put up with MBTA every day and we do recognize it's a major improvement for the city. We're doing our part. You know, we do put up with it, um, but this is this is getting. You know, when this kind of stuff happens, it's it's really stressful for everybody on the street. So, just as much as you can divert from Hillsdale, it would it would I think solve a lot of problems. 
And that's what I have to say. Your name, because your name, your number count was your name again. It's Pat Xavier, X A V I E R. Thank you very much. And Pat. that's not my that's not my number, so that's why I don't even uh, know I what that number you, is. I gathered that you said that. Uh, I just wanted to get your name yeah. down. I think we've met before, Pat, as well, and I appreciate your patience, and we do understand. Um, I think it was alluded to earlier that they're looking for a way to connect to Galvin engineering wise because of all the stacked tracks through the yard and such very difficult yeah. uh, but they're they haven't written that off and um they're looking at that but uh we understand the our neighbors i, I found a picture online of uh the yard in 1928 and the houses around it and the access off hutchins uh hillsdale i, I mean we've been neighbors for a long long time and you guys have been very patient yeah. appreciate that going in thank you thank you I think uh, Jesse Korea has a hand up as well. Can we go back to Jesse? Hi, all. Sorry to take up a little bit more time. I just had a no quick problem. question. Ahead, um, I know that you all mentioned uh, that there is a timeline. Um, I was wondering before the contract is put out, will designs and design elements, specifically like some of my neighbors have already mentioned, fencing, you know, measurements for how much farther it's going to go in, et cetera. Um, are those design elements and are those designs going to be shared with us before that contract goes out and everything is finalized? Adam, you want to take that? Okay. Sure. Um, well, this, um, since we're, again, we're um, fairly early on design, um, this is the first uh, public meeting, but we will have public meetings at you know, key milestones as we progress with design and uh, going into construction to, to keep all yes, you know, the will. residents all, all informed. Do. Thank you. Oh. Yep. Sorry, so you will have an opportunity to see where, how we progress with the design and uh, just to get an update on where we stand and uh, kind of how we've come along and progress with the design overall, so. Great. So, Adam, that's good. So often the milestones, a little bit has changed, Jesse, with COVID um, it, as far as, because it used to be, you know, it, it, you'd have more of these, so the T is ironing out these, these um, virtual public meetings, which have worked really well, give people a lot of opportunity. Um, the, there, there will be design, you know, as the design evolves to 75% or something like that, there'll be probably another of these kinds of meetings. And then as Adam said, when the contractor comes on, um, another thing that was mentioned, sometimes in contractor contracts, we require that they have a hotline. So neighbor, if there's a trucks out at one in the morning, it doesn't help you to go to any website but you, you can call and the, the supervisor out there, not that they're not gonna be out there one morning on this case, but you know, if you have an issue of dust during the day and you don't wanna reply on an email, we can look into the contract and perhaps have the contractor have a direct line to their um, superintendent so that they can be addressed quick. Is that out of school, Alan? Adam, I, that sound all right? No, I just think in general, you know, project is gonna look for ways to, you know, try to ease your concerns and, um, Give you as much opportunity to or as much contact as as we can um leading up to construction and during construction so um try to give you the resources um uh, to go to uh when needed so right we know that, and i apologize for not, if we missed uh hillsdale state thank goodness for the dog walkers we appreciate that uh uh rangely i know rangely's ones that we that we wanted to hit and i thought we had um so thank you for that uh, Joe, maybe I could summarize a few comments that we've gotten, not questions, but comments. Um, basically all uh, adamant about having uh, a meeting in person. And I know you've gone over that, but people have asked me to just, uh, you know, reemphasize their desire to actually meet face to face. Um, okay. So we hear that loud and clear and we have the database of uh, emails and stuff for attendees tonight. We will talk yep. to the project team and figure out how, um, you know, how, obviously with the COVID-19, we don't, our safety has got to come first, but uh, whether it be another Zoom meeting with, with uh, Hillsdale residents specifically, um, we will work with the project team and figure out how to address people's concerns. Right. right. We'll get together and uh, discuss if we can do that um, while doing it safely and following all the protocols uh, required for that. And then um, as we, 
I'll be able to hash out the details for that. Um, we will let everybody know. Okay. We have another question I see in the, the Q&A area, and it talks about how the red line cars will be cleaned out. Now, this project team isn't with the operations or the cleaning agency or the employees of cleanup, but what it says is that currently cars get swept out near the crossover. And the result is a lot of trash along the tracks. Um, and, and, and is this work in Codman Yard include provisions for a facility that deals with the trash being removed from the cars? So right now, the scope of the project does not include any kind of facility um, of that kind. Um, and again, um, we're not operational folks um, that deal with the cleaning, but something that as a project we can still kind of look into and uh, you know, try to make sure that trash doesn't just get thrown out there. Okay. So that is um, most of the q and A. I I don't see any other hands raised. And uh, I know we had that one issue with Charles Bankowski. Charles, we apologize for that. I think you talked to Marty on the cell phone. Marty, did you guys talk separately? We did. And it was Charles and uh, Alice who were adamant about having a face-to-face. -face. Okay. And that's, that's been very, very uh, well heard. So I think if there's nothing else, I will move it uh, back to Adam to uh, thank everybody for attending and, um, and, and, and invite you all to the resources we have for your future participation and look forward to hearing from everybody again as this project evolves. Yeah, thanks, Joe. So uh, I do hope that this uh, virtual public meeting was informative for everyone that was able to attend. Um, and I hope it at least addressed uh, some of your concerns or at least your initial concerns uh, um, that we will keep in mind as we progress with design and go into construction. Um, the META and our project team appreciate appreciates uh, all your participation in the meeting. Um, again, please keep in mind that we are in the early stages of design and uh, more of the details that were in question uh, are going to be developed as we progress. Um, also, we do understand that the virtual meeting process is you know, fairly new. Uh, during all this, the COVID times and uh, we appreciate all the patience that you guys have uh, in this new process. Um, again, we'll get together as a project team and see how a face-to-face -face meeting may be possible. Um, you know, if it can be done safely, um, that's something we'd have to get back to everybody on. Um, we encourage uh, everyone's feedback on all aspects of the meeting, um, including the platform that we used um, so that way we can improve upon future meetings and make them go as smoothly as possible. Um, any additional questions and comments um, can be submitted anytime um, via the contact information uh, that you see below. Um, and we'll try to make every effort to respond in a timely manner. Um, I believe it was mentioned that the online comment form does go directly to our project team. Um, so it's not like you'll be going through MBTA channels or anything like that to get to us. Uh, we'll be able to respond uh, as we get your comments. So um, thank you everyone for participating. Um, I hope everyone has a good evening. Thank you all and have a great night and, and uh, we will see you at our next meeting and hear from a lot of you in between, I'm sure. Take care and everybody be well. Bye now.